Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Will and Deshaun Show podcast. I am your boy, Will. And I'm Deshaun. Deshaun, how are you? I'm well. How are you? I am amazing. So today's podcast, we want to talk about limitations and expectations of of your partner or somebody that you want to have sex with. So we came across this post where somebody, well, this uh, kind of popular Instagram gay guy who's very attractive he's muscular he's very attractive masculine looking and he was talking about how people have expectations or how people feel that if you of a certain aesthetic you shouldn't be basically a bottom and I know we get this a lot within the gay community of people saying that because you're of a more of a masculine motif and you're muscular and tall and big like a football player or athlete that you can't be quote unquote a bottom or you shouldn't be a bottom how do you feel about that, Deshaun? Um, I think in this day and age, we should be able to let people be whoever they want to be. And um, I also think, you know, bottom shaming has been a thing in the gay community because bottom, I think... Bottom shaming will always be a thing, unfortunately. Right. I think, you know, when it comes to gay men, you know, being called gay, the automatic... Being called gay back in the day when people were... You know, using gay as like an attack on your mm-hmm. masculinity. The first thing people related that to was getting fucked in the ass. So I think being emasculated. Yeah, the stigma of a bottom is still very much in the gay community so, and the gay culture. Okay, as well. with that being said, who uses that stigma now? Now, at first, straight people were using that oh, dick of the booty ass nigga kind of thing, or like you say, calling you gay means you weak because you get fucked in the ass or whatever mm-hmm. um, as a derogatory thing. So who's keeping up that now? The gay community, your other gay people who are also bottoms are shaming you for being a bottom. Yeah. That is so crazy to me. Mm-hmm. I think that is so wild and it's always so funny. And of course, we've all done it. I'm guilty of it. We all have done it because it's so, so quickly to say like, oh girl, she ain't up at the bottom. And it's like, why? Like, if if some of a guy, a gay guy, show any form of femininity, they automatically stigma bottom, right, right. Or they feel like if a guy is feminine or have feminine traits, they can't be a top. They are automatically a bottom. And I just feel like in this day and age, like, I can like just just at the same time, how I can see anybody being gay, I can see anybody being a bottom and anybody being a top. Do you feel? I feel is that the whole bottom shaming thing also comes from heteronormative, her, her, yeah, heteronormative act, um, perspective, because within the gay community, a lot of people take on these heteronormative roles where they say the bottom is like a female and the top is like the man in the relationship, should we say? And in the straight world, women are devalued and degraded and thinking of less of than the cis man. And so they bring that same thing into the gay world where they classify all feminine men as bottoms and they're not able to be quote unquote tops because they're not masculine. They don't take on this alpha male role. And if you like and if you see guys who are alpha male looking, but they're bottoms and a lot of people are disappointed because they're not given the fantasy that they want. Right. Or they're not fulfilling the, what they their expectations of what they thought that man was 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 sexually in the bedroom. Now let's get this straight. Top and bottom are for me are only sexual positions in the bedroom only. That is not a lifestyle which runs my life. You know, I know a lot of younger gays and people who be taught by just bringing our heteronormative stuff stuff in into the gay community. We feel like, oh, okay, if I'm more masculine, I got to be a top. Or if I'm more feminine, I got to be a bottom. So we kind of automatically go into those stereotypes. Mm-hmm. Um, not knowing that it's just so, well, to be finished. Tops, quote unquote, like I said, if they're masculine, you the you the man in the relationship, so you got to do X Y Z like a man. Or if you the bottom, you got to do X Y Z as well. Bottom to cook, clean, keep the house, and all that stuff. Why does that have to be designated to someone who's a bottom? Like, 
because they, again, they bring they bring on their heteronormative roles unto the gay community. But at the end of the day, we're two men. So two men, just say even if you're two alpha men, you don't have to be an alpha and a beta man. You can just be two alpha men in, in a relationship. So what makes you say, oh, you got to be the quote unquote, got to be the girl in a relationship because you like to get penetrated or you don't like to get penetrated. Take away those things because those are only things that happen in the bedroom when somebody, and at the end of the day, all gay men can do both. We have a penis and we have a butt. So we have the ability to do both. And I feel like, again, like I said, in having these limitations to your partnership or your sexual role with someone is very um, one-sided. And it's kind of like, I ain't gonna say dumb, but open yourself up to allow yourself to enjoy both things or even try both things. I know that people have a preference where they prefer to be a strict bottom or somebody prefer to be a strict top and they only date strict this and strict that. But again, those, to me, I feel like those limitations. And it, it being in that verse, having versatility is so much better because now you have open opportunities to do anything. Right. Um, I think it also just kind of depends on what your partner wants. You know, I, some some things work for some people. So, okay. We live in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And everybody said Atlanta is very um, bottom city. You know, 100% bottom. They said there's no tops in Atlanta. I mean, no Which bottom. I don't believe. But, okay. Somebody getting topped, right? So, do you feel is that two bottoms or two tops can be in a relationship together? I think mean, they'll just have to compromise. But what if they're t- both two strict bottoms or two strict tops? They'll just have to compromise. You know? Do you think that you'll just have to out? try some new things? So they will have to dabble in the versatility life? Yeah. I think I think it could work out. You'll just have to be willing to make it work. I mean, relationships are work anyway. Sex is work anyway. So it comes a time when you're going to have to do some things that you might not have thought you would have ever done. Absolutely. You know, and I think that's a relationship period, you know, even in straight relationships when it comes to roles, like just because a woman is a woman, I mean, she should have to cook just because a man is a man. I mean, he should have to do X, Y, Z. That comes from all those patriarchal. Right. From like the fifties, essentially. That that whole toxic masculinity stuff. Right. So I I feel like, I feel like a relationship is all about. It's misogyny that they bring into the gay community right I feel like relationships are all about making it work with your partner no matter what you no know, for better or worse like doing what you have to do you may have to do some things that you never thought you would have to do you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying you may have to experience some things That's that you never had to experience yeah and I feel that a lot of times we cut ourselves off from enjoyments and sensations that we probably never feel because you we may have to learn some new tricks true but again because we don't explore we don't we cut we have we put limitations on our relationships within the in, within the bedroom you put yourself in a box absolutely because i don't do this i don't do that don't get me wrong like i said things of consent if you're consenting to do certain things like i said i would say this the two main things are a hard no for me are um scat play and and golden showers to me those two things are a hard no not scat play. I can't. But again, some people are into those things. You have to understand, people are into those things. I mean, people into what they into. Right. You know. I'm just, that's just a no for me. What's wrong with being peed on? You don't like being peed on? No. Why? He belongs in the toilet. Have you tried it? No. I think you should try it. I'm, I'm good. It's nice and warm. I'm good. You show? Sure? Because you want to be a, <laughs> a, 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 a urinal. That's fine for you. Not for me, though. Oh, okay, dude. Why do you keep bringing that up? That's scat play. Like, just in case y'all didn't know, if y'all was interested in Will, no scat play, no piss. Period. Okay? I'm just saying. But anyway. Um, exploring, you know, I feel like the beauty of having a partner, because you know, we're, we're so used to hookups, having a partner is having someone you can explore. So, you with. do you think that's the reason why, um, it's so hard from when you have when you're being intimate with your partner because we're so used to hookup sex? Do you think that holds a um, puts a, I guess, limitation? 
or expectation of what sex is like. I think it's that, and I think it's also just kind of media and just kind of mm-hmm. looking at how things have shaped your mind and programming and okay. making certain things are supposed to be certain ways. You know, yeah, I think we all have some kind of box. I definitely agree with you on that. I think that we come into this situation, especially when it comes down to our sexuality or being sex, physical sex with someone, is that we have those, I guess, things that we think was going to happen, right? Versus what really happens, and versus, like you said, we have to learn how to please each other. You have to, you have to be taught how to please your partner. Everybody can last say I got good sex all day. Yeah, you might get good, good sex to you. Good sex or, is relative. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Or to someone else. But to me, your sex is whack. Or your sex was like mediocre. Or you could have good sex. That means I was really pleased on what we did in the bedroom together. Period. Um, but yeah, I think people just have to be willing to open their mind. Like, I feel like if you're in a relationship, period, you're going to end up opening your mind. You're going to end up doing some things that, you know, are just going to be outside of your norm. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not doing things outside of your norm, you're not growing and you're in a comfort zone. So you should want someone to come into your life to bring you out of that comfort zone and to bring you into new things. You know what? That is so true. And I feel that way in getting into, getting with a partner is that that is someone to bring you out of your comfort zone as well as you bring them out of their And not zone. just sexually, just all around. Absolutely. You know? If you're not helping me grow and evolve into a different person, why, why are you in my life? And not forcing you. Right. Because, you know, a lot of times you'll get into a situation where people try to force you to be something that you're not or something forcing you to be something they want you to be versus allowing you and helping you to grow. Right. Versus, walk, versus pulling up the weeds versus cultivating the soil. Right, right. You got to help the flower grow, not just be yanking you right the right. Help your partner bloom in sexual or even in other ways versus straight snatching them out the ground. Right. You gotta finesse. Something's gotta be ripened. Right, you know, it, it's a process and it's a approach to do things like that. So, um, don't be just trying to make somebody jump off the cliff on y'all second date. Right, you trying to flip from the ceiling. Right. <laughs> y'all I mean, if it were, you know, I mean, if that's what y'all like, you know, you know, don't be too harsh, too sudden, not too much, too fast. Do you? What are some of your that you that you feel that you're limited to do? Something that you will do and that you won't do. Um, some things that I won't do. Um, some things that I will do. I'll do more than one person. Okay. Um, some things that I won't do. Um, hmm. What won't I do? I won't do bestiality. Yeah, I'm good on that too. That's a hard no. Nor will I do. Well, yet he said he went over by P and. You can't <laughs> shit on me. You can't shit on me With because the shots, he go in the shower now. I just feel like you know when, when <laughs> he down for the golden shower. I, I'm not gonna say I'm down for the golden shower, but you'll try. I just feel Would like you be the giver or the receiver. I just feel like no, you need to answer the question. Can I answer? Can I finish? I just feel like no, is that an answer? Can I answer? Go ahead, sure. I would like. I to know. just feel like. <laughs> that when it's already semen going everywhere, it's already other stuff going everywhere too. So I mean, what's the difference? I'm just saying. Okay. That's how I feel. So that means yes, y'all. But I'll beat him around the bush. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna make it seem like I'm like putting the ad out on Craigslist looking for golden showers. Right. I mean, I get it. You know, yeah. like I said, you got a, you with your partner, y'all been together, you want to try and explore something new and it happened. You're like, okay, cool. P does have a smell, though. Because you know niggas don't drink water. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. But, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm an experimental guy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I am willing to try a lot of different things. You know. I don't think I'll do anything you know, uh, ooh, see, we'll be trying to get me to tell too much about this. Okay? We got to keep it real. This is a, this is a podcast. It is a podcast. Real. When it comes to sticking things inside of me, I, I can't do too many foreign objects. Okay. You know what I mean? If it's outside of some sort of dildo, or you know, penis. that's it. it. That's it. 
You no, know. So no fisting. No brooms. Oh, all right. Come on, my handles. You know. <laughs> You know, no fists, you no, know what I'm saying? No like, microphone. You know what I'm saying? No rodents, oh, you know. Oh, yeah. I, oh, I forgot people do do that. Yeah. Y'all be trying a lot of stuff. Yeah. No shaming of y'all kinks, but. Uh, hey, get, do That's you. Fine. You won't do me, but do you? Um, I'm not down for that either. But, um, and, you know, the world of sexual exploitation is so big. It's very broad. So I can't really say everything that I'm not into or into. Because, again, and you haven't tried. And, everything. and I feel the same way. I, that's why I said I don't. There's certain things that are like a hard no for me. Maybe like those three or four things. But like you said, other stuff, I'm like, I'll probably down because it might feel good and I want to try it. Right. And you never know, I may be thinking, oh, that seemed cool. And I do it and I'd be like, oh my God, that was the worst thing ever. Yeah, I would say, you don't know if you don't like it unless you try it. Right. So some things I ain't trying though, I'm just saying. Yeah, man. It's going to be a no trap. Yeah, no animals and. Um, shit play yeah and you know all those things yeah I mean but there are a lot of different kinks it's a lot of different fetishes it's it's a lot of things that people like um so I mean I have a couple of fetishes that I like you know but they're not they're not dangerous and they're very safe I guess to me you know but again to each his own um you like what you like but and I like what I like, and I've, I've tried some things. I would like to explore some things, you know. I like role play. I like. I'm a little BDSM, you know, a little you bit like of that. cuts. Like a cutting slip tighten somebody with blood showing. Mm-hmm. No, that's dangerous. P- no, that's a fetish. I know, but that's not a thing for me. I'm yeah. good on that. Like me and Alcina just did a podcast on fetishes. Yeah. Light bulb moment. Shout out to light bulb moment. Shout out to light bulb moment. But yeah. yes, um, things of like cutting, anything with some secretions that outside of low key semen, I'm good on. You know, I understand. And, and I still have a limitation when it comes down to semen too. You like um, fighting? Some people like to fight. Some people like a sexual fetish. Is mm-hmm. that a sexual kink? Oh, it's just long list of. Kinks and fetishes that um, we got. If we wrestling, yeah. Okay. Little, and that was a little oil wrestling. I'm down. A little, a little tussling. Yeah, <laughs> I'm down. Right. So, um, the, put me in the head like no. <laughs> It's a lot of kinks. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and um, you know, it's based on you and your partner. I'll say at the end of the, the day, consensual. What y'all like and, and what y'all willing to try? Who, if y'all, if boring sex works for y'all. Y'all, if not having sex works for y'all, that's that's y'all like. This is new term I heard. Well, I found out about. It's called being a side, and what a side is. A side is a person who do not like penetration, giving nor receiving. They prefer um, oral sex and jacking off. Mm. That's their thing. They like that only. They don't prefer the penetrating or getting penetrated. They just prefer oral and. Bait sex, I guess. Baiting is what they call it. We're jacking off. So that's what they like. And I was like, that is so cool. Because I found myself in times that I'm like, yeah, I'm down. If that's what y'all want to do. Because like I said, being being as a gay man, the whole penetrative thing and being penetrated and penetrating someone else, especially if you are the receiver, it's a lot of work. I'll say this. It's a lot of work. It is work. It is you know, work. If, you're, if you ain't got no high fiber diet, it it's is. a lot of work. It is work, but you ain't trying to be pain. Uh, uh, so you, know, you, gotta, you need the penetration. Huh? It's not so much. I need, I don't know how could you intimate you? I could be with someone who's just doing a side. I'll say that. Okay. Who's a side? Okay. Mm-hmm. I get it. I'm I'm the same way. I don't have to have it like I feel like that works the two out of the four days that we're having sex, I would say. Like that would work for me. Yeah, like like it can happen, but with that just being the limit, like I don't know. For some people. If it works, like I said, whatever works for you. Yeah, because I mean, to be. Y'all like to just sit down and stare at each other for five minutes and meditate together. And I mean, if that work, it works. If y'all get off off of it, I ain't mad. Hey. Yeah. If that's what works for you. Okay. I mean, again, again, exploration. Explore some things to see what you like. Yeah. 
Listen, and don't I think the main purpose of this podcast this episode is to not judge people based on what you think they should be yeah and don't limit yourself right or other people let them people explore and do whoever they want to do be whoever they and just because be. somebody is taught here's the thing too okay let's I'm gonna get right on into it sexual positions have no height and weight requirements people get mad they be, and I hear a lot of switch because here you go with the bottom shame in this world that you feel like oh if you are six feet and over or at least five eleven and over you're too big to be a bottom if you're, you have to be a certain weight and height to be a bottom, quote unquote, or you have to be a height and certain weight to be a top. So a tops can be six feet over football player bill, but a bottom is supposed to be, I guess, five, six, and small and petite. Mm-hmm. I, what do y'all come up with this stuff? That again, that's a limitation. If you see the big buff nigga in the gym and he a power bottom, you you should take you should have had that expectation that the man was a t- automatic thought was a top because based on his aesthetic. And I think it's also best to take from this uh, podcast, go into it without any expectations. Absolutely. You know? Especially in the beginning anyway. Like, if you meet somebody and y'all just kind of meeting and getting to know each other, like, why you, you, sometimes y'all be thinking about sex too early anyway. I think you only think about sex early when you're trying to do a hookup and get a hookup. And do, so the people basically leave with sex. Yeah. Maybe that's and they said that they lack intelligence enough to have conversations where they only leave with their body. I think they do what's easiest. Hmm. You know, people do what what works. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Hmm. But um, a, a, a semi lack of intelligence. But mm. yeah, maybe they aren't using their intelligence. Yeah, because a lot of times people. You're right. People do use their body because again, be lazy. and if you are, mm, that's a lot of gay content is like that as well so we will have another right. podcast about that um yeah i think because people are know they are conventionally attractive that they do lead with their body because that's what's always gotten them thus far mm-hmm. and nobody ever challenged them mentally because like you said they see a guy who has a nice body he's he's attractive first thing they think about is oh how fine how sexy he is but he could be dumb as a box of rocks or he could be like very narcissistic and not even care about your whole horrible personality. Absolutely. Yeah. But um and broke. Okay. But um thank y'all so much for listening to us. Uh, tell us what you think about you know what a bottom supposed to look like, what a top supposed to look like. Um, experiences you've had with people who thought maybe you were supposed to be a certain thing, or your friend were supposed to be a certain position or role, or with you being a bottom or a top, what you were supposed to do, what came with that sexual position. Tell us all of that, and um, subscribe, like, comment, share, tell a friend, all of that. Make sure y'all follow us at Will and Deshaun on Instagram as well as Best of Black and Deshaun Duran. Thank you so much. Be blessed. Bye, y'all.